blogger and the alumni of CQ University, Melbourne. During her university life, she actively participated in the social innovation, which she is passionate about, and her passion for social innovation discovered the various opportunities available in the university. She was an international student ambassador. She was the presenter of iChange. She also got the opportunity to travel to US to participate in Osaka U event and she was featured in different university articles and promotional videos where she shared about her experience in the university. What? You might be scratching your head and trying to think, how's that possible? How did she achieve all of this, right? Well, let's find out. This is Neeraj from Sydney and you are watching Sydney Reflect. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, then this is the best time to do. Now, let's go back to the reflection. When it comes to studying abroad, it is most Nepali's dream to fly abroad for better life. And Urusa Kangsakar was one of those. So one day, when she told her dad that she wanted to go to Melbourne to study and for a better life, she remembered that her dad was not happy at first. Because he believes that youth like her should stay in the country for its economic development. And also for the middle class family like her, it was the big price to pay. 2016, one of the big day in Urusa's life. Because finally she is traveling to Melbourne all the way from Nepal with a big dream and lots of excitement. Before coming to Melbourne, she already made clear that besides study, she would explore all the opportunities available in the university and grab them because she was always passionate about exploring opportunities. My just passion and my goal was, yes, I will be studying, I will be doing my degree, I want to be well good at it. I, I know about that. I have faith in myself, but I'm going to grab everything that is around me. And also, the goal was to represent her country, Nepal, because she was so surprised to know that when someone talks about Nepal, they mostly think about Mount Apres and the Himalayas and probably one of the coldest place on earth. Seriously? But she wants to let others, at least in the university, to know that Nepal is not just about mountain and Himalayas, it's also about people who have the ability to grab the opportunities and show the world what they are capable of. The main goal was to represent my country and I just wanted to spread that Nepal is just not about mountains. Because when you say you are from Nepal, everyone was everyone will say, Oh, have you been to Mount Everest? And you know, okay, Lord Buddha was born there. But except those two identities, I wanted to share the whole, you know, at least university that we as Nepali are no less than others, and then we can grab opportunities and we can handle. She's absolutely right. Let's see the example set by these amazing people from Nepal. Binod Choudhury, the only one billionaire from Nepal. Shesh Ghali, the Nepalese Australian billionaire. Santo Saha, the finalist in the BBC MasterChef. Praval Gurung, world famous fashion designer. And the list goes on and on. Moving forward, she used to connect with the students who were actively engaged in the university workshop and events. She used to talk with lots of people and she used to ask how she could become the part of it. And that's how she started her journey of becoming a part of social innovation in the university. And when I went to Sikh University, there were mentors, they were wearing different kind of t-shirts and they had a mentor at the back of their t-shirt. And then I would just go and then ask, what do you do? What is your name? And you know, how can I apply for all this stuff? And it's just my passion to grab all the opportunities that it is there. But social innovation was in her heart back in Nepal where she was involved in selling the organic food prepared by the community. And we were having a chat about, you know, what my passions are back in Nepal as well. So social innovation for me didn't just start here in Australia. It started back in Nepal. In Nepal, I was involved in a community farmers market in my home country, uh, hometown where we would gather organic fruits or vegetables that were grown by people living there. 
and we would sell there and then it was just like a hub where we would meet every Saturday and have a conversation about it. all the profits we going to an office. So I was just sharing, you know, how I have done this um, work. I was handling the marketing over there. But wait a minute. How did she become the part of iChange? Well, it was the 25th anniversary of Sikh University event where she participated as a student ambassador. And when she met Robin Dick, the project manager of iChange. I met Robin Dick, who was the project manager of iChange and um, who was also um, one of the head teams of iChange and social innovation there in Sikh University when I was there. And I met him in 25, um, the 25th anniversary of CQ University. So I was um, an international student ambassador and I was invited there. And there, my, you know, I, I used to talk to any people there and I, I love to network. As you can see, I love to talk as well. So I was just sharing, you know, how I have done this um, work. I was handling the marketing over there. And then after that, I worked in an INGO in Nepal. Uh, it's called WWF Nepal. So I was just sharing all my passion about social enterprise, social innovation to Robin. And we just got along with it. And then I think he remembered that for a while. And after that, I just got involved in social innovation. I started going to a lot of workshops that was organized by our university. One day, when she opened her email account, she received an email from Robin Dick. And it was an opportunity to become a part of iChange. She still remembers when she read the email and knew about the opportunity. At first, she was confused whether or not to grab that opportunities. And second, she was hesitant because she had never done this before. I remember I got email from Robin when my uh, finals were just knocking at my door. I think it was just two or three days. And I got an email from him and then I just looked at the email and I was like, can I take this opportunity or not? I've never done this. I know about social innovation and I want to learn a lot about it. I want to be involved in that project. However, shall I be, you know, putting aside my studies for a while because I was preparing for my exams. Finally, she decided to come out from her comfort zone and took the opportunities. And guess what? She became more confident. After the project was completed, one day she saw her big banner with her poster in the universities and everyone started to recognize her. But more than that, she had the opportunity to visit different social enterprises, interview with different social entrepreneurs and ask them what social innovation is to them and why it is so important in their life. About I think three or four months because not only did we you know, prepare the videos. Not only I spoke in front of the cameras and read through the teleprompter, I had to go uh, with my other team. His name is Leslie and he's from Bandaber. So me and Leslie would have to go to different social um, entrepreneurs or anyone who is involved in social innovation and then interview them and then ask them what social innovation is actually to them and why they are in the field. So um, we went to Rockhampton and I had an opportunity to talk to a lot of CEO directors, people from government, NGOs, NGOs, and yeah, different sectors. So it was, it was a very um, good experience and I'll always treasure those experiences throughout my life actually. She also shared her learning from those experiences and how we as an individual can embrace the concept of social innovation in our life. Uh, why, why do you think this social innovations or human centered design is important in in our life or in the in the life of an individual? Um, so, as I am being involved in the projects that I'm um, doing an internship with, why to you know? question everyone present there why you are being involved in social innovation, why you are in this uh, working in this company where you could be working in other companies, you know, doing other jobs. And it's all about people's mindset, as I have mentioned before, and their purpose to help people. Um, also trying to, so there are many organizations that are 
manufacturing you know not being sustainable but there are other spectrum of organizations or companies that are looking about how to solve the human problems how to solve the ground level problems and these problems are actually brought up by humankind it was it is it just didn't come up there it's due to the pollution we created um it's due to our actions that we are facing this problem and we need to solve them so i see a group of people that they are trying to solve these problems because they feel that it's their purpose in life as well rather than um just their profession we need to get out of our comfort zone we need to seek opportunities and grab them it's easier said than done right so i ask her from the perspective of international student how to get out of the comfort zone or what is the first step that we need to take on as we are talking about this one but i think there are lots of international students who want to come out from their comfort zone but they are really struggling from that so what do you think urusha they should do i'm like what are the step they should take on that i'm like how should they start on that when they want to come out of their comfort zone they can you know re- relate to us as um they can just reference our experience by listening to podcasts like this because everyone has their struggle and it takes a li- you know a lot of hard work persistence and then coming in to get out of your comfort zone um and first first of all i would suggest um any international students or anyone who's trying to get out of your comfort zone to find mentors or to find people who are you know who they can relate their story to it can be you know a younger person or anyone it doesn't need to be a celebrity to anyone and try to find a mentor that can actually help you out try to speak up how you can improve on things um if you want to get out of your comfort zone if you just write in your notes and if you don't speak about it to anyone no one will know and no one will give you an opportunity so you need to actually speak out i know it is not easy thing to do but you need to have that you know um that is well and courage to get out get out of your comfort zone and international students also need to think that melbourne is melbourne or sydney or australia is um there are a lot of opportunities here it is difficult to find but there are a lot of opportunities there if you have a conversation or if you just send an email to someone they will come back to you and um just try to find what you like and find a mentor talk to them go for a coffee or just hang out in zoom and anyone who is in a profession or anyone you know is trying to um i feel that everyone is trying to you know help someone out for example if someone comes to me or to you and asks questions and obviously you ask you would help them out and you share your stories that would inspire them so yes that would be my answer she's right in australia if you send an email the coolest thing is you get the reply back and also finding a member who can relate to you is the best way to go not only that figuring out what your priorities and what you really want in your life is an important because we just have 24 hours in a day right you need to see how many hours you have in a day everyone has 24 hours you need to see how you want to utilize it even though all the distractions and noises are there you need to you know list down what other things you want to do the noise and distractions are always going to be there it's part of your journey to your life and you need to just accept that but even though you are in that zone we need to see how can i benefit it we asked her to reflect about how she found her life now compared to the days she arrived in melbourne oh my god that's a big question to be asked right now actually um so there are a lot of changes on me i see a lot of growth and when i speak to my friends in the car as well they mentioned that i've you know taken up a lot and um i have grabbed a lot of opportunities so when i was in the uni life i was doing a lot and right now um when i reflect back i feel that that uni life was really fun as well you didn't have to think about pr or anything else not even the you know your profession um when i reflect back 
um, I think I'm in a happy place right now because I am doing um, what I studied, my profession, and it's going pretty well. And I'm doing an internship um, with a social advisory firm that I had mentioned. And so the main reason I did, I joined that firm to do an internship, it's a voluntary internship, um, was it is a balance and it correlates accounting and social motivation. So we are, I wanted to learn about um, SROI, it's social return on investment. Mm -hmm. I, my passion is to work on um, organizations or companies that are doing something good for our community or in other terms, a for, for purpose organization. Mm -hmm. um, so that passion led me to do this internship and I'm having a lot of fun learning a lot, a lot about new things. Um, I did not want to do that nine to five job where I'm just, you know, stuck in there. I did that for three years. And even when I was doing that, I was doing tax work as well. So after I've came here, I've done not just one professional, one job, I've had hands in many things. And um, yeah, it's just a happy place for me to be right now, even though there are a lot of external things that's going around. Before saying goodbye, let's reflect the three key insight from Urusa's reflection. Number one, look for the opportunities and grab them. Number two, get out from the comfort zone. Number three, be who you want to be. 